Oxygen Dissociation Curve In this lesson, we'll be discussing the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, an essential concept for understanding how oxygen is transported in the blood and delivered to tissues. This curve illustrates the relationship between the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood and the percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen, which we call HBO2. The curve has a sigmoidal or S-shaped appearance. Initially, as oxygen binds to hemoglobin, the saturation increases gradually. Once the oxygen binding reaches a critical threshold, the saturation rises steeply before leveling off at higher oxygen pressures. This unique shape is key to how hemoglobin adapts to varying oxygen demands in the body. Now let's talk about what causes the curve to shift. A rightward shift occurs when hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen decreases meaning it releases oxygen more easily to tissues. Factors that cause this include an increase in carbon dioxide levels, body temperature, hydrogen ion concentration, which lowers the pH, and higher levels of 2,3-bisphosphoglyceric acid, or 2,3-BPG. These conditions are often present in metabolically active tissues where oxygen demand is higher. The rightward shift increases the P50 value, which is the partial pressure of oxygen needed for 50% saturation, facilitating oxygen delivery to these tissues. On the other hand, a leftward shift occurs when hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen increases, meaning it holds onto oxygen more tightly. This happens in conditions like decreased carbon dioxide levels, lower body temperature, reduced hydrogen ion concentration, raising the pH, and lower levels of 2,3-BPG. While this shift enhances oxygen binding, it also means oxygen release to tissues is reduced. The sigmoidal shape of the curve is particularly significant because it allows for efficient oxygen delivery. At high PO2 levels, like in the lungs, hemoglobin remains almost fully saturated, even with minor changes in oxygen pressure. However, as PO2 drops to lower levels, like in peripheral tissues, the saturation decreases rapidly ensuring a large amount of oxygen is unloaded where it's needed most. Clinically, this concept is important. For example, at a PO2 of around 90 millimeters of mercury, hemoglobin is approximately 97% saturated, ensuring efficient oxygen transport from the lungs. A moderate drop in PO2 to 75 millimeters of mercury only slightly reduces saturation to 94%, maintaining oxygen supply to vital organs. However, when PO2 decreases further to around 50 millimeters of mercury, saturation drops more significantly to 84%, promoting oxygen release to tissues in hypoxic conditions. This adaptive mechanism of hemoglobin is vital for maintaining oxygen delivery across varying physiological states and is fundamental to understanding respiratory physiology in both health and disease.